It's 26 days until the presidential and parliamentary elections. This is Joe News Prime with me, Samuel Kojobri. We're live on DSTV channel 521, uh, 421, Go TV channel 125, on all social media platforms and around the world on myjoeonline.com. Now in the headlines, this are a 13-year-old plea for life-saving dialysis, along with appeals from over 400 other patients reaches the government as they pledge to fully cover dialysis costs beginning December 1 after months of piloting. When I hear that someone on dialysis and I ask myself, so will I also die? We'll hear from the Renault Patient Association of Ghana who are praying this is not just another empty political promise. Uh, equally, it's not a political talk I and mean, it's something they are going to do. It. And we thank God. There have been a couple of meetings and then we've seen the actual. Also coming up, conspicuous absence of Speaker of Parliament or his lawyers at the Supreme Court as it's had uh, the controversial seat vacancy matter. Set tongues wagging with the Apex Court scheduled to deliver its verdict at 9 a.m. on Tuesday. My court's no representation for Speaker of Parliament. We note also that the Speaker of Parliament has not filed any statement of case or memorandum of issues despite the opportunity given for them to be filed. We have details from the Supreme Court, plus the AG's push to have the Supreme Court crack the whip on the Speaker and his lawyers. And also the Ghana Medical Association calls out members of a sexual harassment of patients as it reviews a chunk of doctors are involved in alcoholism and drug abuse. There has been in extreme circumstances reported cases of sexual harassment perpetrated by health workers, the victims of our own professionalism choose to blame the witches and the wizards as well as a fear for for their predicament instead of taking on the system the tear-filled speech of 13 year old rosemary bodu diagnosed with end-state kidney failure desperately crying for help since her diagnosis rosemary has been on dialysis for nearly three years. Like over 400 other dialysis patients in Ghana, she and her family are struggling to cope with the escalating cost of treatment, which recently increased. Now, with doctors recommending a kidney transplant to prevent her condition from worsening, her family is left grasping for support to afford the $25,000 life-saving procedure. Here are excerpts of Joy News feature titled, Dialysis at 13 by my colleague, I just see myself how I am and look at them. Is someone suffering from what I'm doing before I go there? So I don't like going to the start to people. Her dream of becoming a doctor has been overshadowed by the harsh reality of her present. The constant worry of finding funds for treatment and the fear of death always heavily on her young shoulders. I want to be a doctor in the future, but sometimes I think maybe the future will not come true because of the condition I am in today. Kidney transplant is often the preferred long-term treatment option. Transplant may offer the possibility of restoring kidney function and improving quality of life compared to ongoing dialysis. Unfortunately, Rosemary and her mother have been pushed to the very edge of society. To even afford one square meal a day is a luxury, let alone afford to foot for a transplant. But they remain hopeful in the face of adversity. I need help for transplant because I I will not like to be on dialysis for the rest of my life. In this situation, too, it's not that 
being on the dialysis will help the kidney to die quickly and less painful. So I'm pleading with people to help me to do something. My mother cannot afford that money. My father cannot. Family members alone to count on what I got. So I'm helping. With, I'm pleading with everybody to help me to do something and stop dialysis. Nti oko machine no so no. Na enkoro mo wo so no. Omo do so wo so pa. Na se se aka ono nko wa. Na I hate that someone on the list is up that. Ask myself. So will I also die? Man Oji Venus report for joining us. Well, the CEO of the National Health Insurance Scheme, Dr. Abuajida Costa, has assured that he will refer the girl's specific case to the board of the National Health Insurance Authority to explore the possibility of funding an organ transplant. He said, I would definitely submit it to the board at our next board meeting, and I look at we will look at what comes up. Like I said, there is a window of opportunity because we'll be going to Parliament very soon for uh, our uh, budget to be approved. So definitely, we are currently doing our budget, and I believe that uh, once the board gives go ahead, then we will know what we can do. <clears throat> If, if you can support this young lady, you, you, know, you have to try and be of help to her. I would uh, run some numbers across that you can get in touch with us on how you can lend a helping hand to this young girl. Her story is such a touching one. I mean, I'm struggling to hold myself together, but in a rather positive turn, the government has announced that it will fully cover dialysis costs for all patients following a three month pilot program initially focused on those above 60 and below 18. Vice President Mahamadou Baumia shared this news during his tour of the central region. Six months ago, he started pilot so yeah, the dialysis no beba national health insurance. So nipa na umuye over sixty, any under eighteen for the last six months, umuji dialysis under national health insurance free. So pilot no yeah the pilot no eba area year from December first this year. From December 1st, all kidney dialysis patients, Umubeji and the National Health Insurance, free. No, our Renal Patient Association has welcomed Vice President Baumia's announcement. President of the Association, Kwajo Bafwa Henkra, says they were engaged by government before this decision was taken and hope it will not be a mere political promise. Uh, if we it's not a political talk, I and mean, it's something they are going to do. It. And we thank God. There have been a couple of meetings, and then we'll see the actual. The point is that if only they are not going to cut the National Health Insurance Fund, you know, it's being cut. It goes to the consolidated fund, and then the consolidated fund, they will write the means of finance, will write some checks to the National Health Insurance. So actually, they don't have access to the whole fund that is going to the National Health Insurance that we are paying. So it was one of the points that we raised at the meeting that if only they would do stop capping it and they would give the money to them. It's not only on dialysis, there are other, other diseases that they can take care of from the farm. Now, I was pleading with you that if you can support this young girl, uh, uh, Rosemary needs help. She has, uh, you know, uh, end state kidney uh, failure and she needs your help. The numbers for you to assist are rolling on the screens now. Please kindly do your bit to support this young lady. The MTN line is 0593 8842. 
If you also happen to do transactions by the bank, then please, the account is a UBA account, airport branch 251-427-8803503. This is the plea of young Rosemary. Her story is touching. She needs a transplant and it's going to cost her and the family $25,000 plus because there will be other uh, cost as well. I hope you help so that uh, we can save this young lady's life. You remember the, the, the musician who, play, who sang a song says, help the one who is alive. So let's help Rosemary live. Away from that, the Ghana Medical Association has called on, out its own members over rising cases of sexual harassment of patients. Now, the GMA also reveals that a chunk of doctors are involved in alcoholism and drug abuse. President of the Ghana Medical Association, Dr. Frank Srebo, raised these concerns at the 66th GMA annual general meeting, revealing that most victims unfortunately give up on the prosecution of these cases of sexual harassment. Watch this. We have some helpers there who are involved in alcoholism, drug misuse, and abuse, which affect the quality of their lives. There has been in extreme circumstances reported cases of sexual harassment perpetrated by health workers. And yesterday, the Medical and Dental Council Registrar, Dr. Divine Bayubala, told us that there are a lot of pending cases of sexual harassment even before the council. We have had cases where doctors have been badly discussed on radio shows and other media outlets. There have been several legal suits against health facilities with the outcomes not being favorable to us as health workers. Indeed, sometimes we are left off the hook simply because the victims of our own professionalism choose to blame the witches and the wizards as well as a fear for for their predicament instead of taking on the system. So when we pray, we should pray for the witches and wizards. They are saving us. Ladies and gentlemen, professionalism to be, should be our silent companion. It has to work with us through our journey of working life. It should always manifest at every opportunity. I know I have painted a great picture, but let us fortify our spirits against despair with curious agility and also balance our ambitions with acceptance. This will make us truly self-sufficient and grant us eternal freedom. Now, these obviously uh, were not the only concerns of the GMA. Dr. Srebo also called a lack of commitment to the job, especially among junior doctors. Let me ask, is professionalism in the health sector driven? Is there so much focus on greed and selfishness? Is there a lack of respect for colleagues and subordinates? Recently, the junior doctors are holding various forum or fora, and they are indicating that we are bullying them. Is it true? But at least all of us can attest to the escalation of lateness to duty, absenteeism, poor documentation, and also not dedicating enough time to our employers. People walk into the hospital at 9, by 12, they are walking out. You ask them, they say they are done. And yet they expect to be paid for working eight hours at least in a day. This is still John News Prime. We'll take a break here. I'll be back with more, please. Don't go away.
Welcome back from the break. Now, the Supreme Court hears seats vacancy controversy without a Speaker of Parliament or his lawyers after a no show in court. Speaker of Parliament Alban Bagbin, uh, Alban Bagbin in his first defendant, uh, is the first defendant in this matter and has been represented by Thadio Sori uh, from the onset of this case until today where no legal representation uh, was made, uh, uh, you know, for him ahead of, uh, for the head of the legislature whose declaration of four seat as vacant is a sub under consideration by the court. Now, the court will not deliver its judgment on this case without any input from the speaker. Member of our legal affairs desk, Kwekwa Sante, sat through proceedings and our reports. The Supreme Court was back in session today hearing the substantive arguments on a substantive case, the interpretation of Article 97 1G and H of the 1992 Constitution. Whether or not, upon a true and proper interpretation of this, these four MPs have lost their seats. Joe Gatti led the team. For Article 97, 1G and H will only take effect, or will only take effect if the act that is the person, if the act that is the person leaving a party by which was elected. join another party. Or to remain or to become independent and seek to remain in parliament with that new political coloration. Attorney General Godfrey Yebo Adame said the conduct of the speaker unlawfully and illegally upset the constitutional order of the country. So far as parliament is constituted by a certain number of MPs or members of parliament representing those constituencies. The composition of parliament shall not be altered except as prescribed for in the constitution. So no person or authority with all respect has the power to make any decision at all or construe the constitution in a way which will alter or change the composition of parliament, except as it is in the constitution. The Speaker of Parliament, Alban Bagwin, was not represented in, in court today. During the entire proceedings, from the start of this case up until now, he has been represented by Mr. Tadio Sori of Sori at Law, and today there was no representation. The court took due notice of that. There's nobody here for the Speaker of Parliament, the first defendant. All right, by court, no representation for Speaker of Parliament. We note also that the Speaker of Parliament has not filed any statement of case or memorandum of issues despite the opportunity given for them to be filed. This matter is for hearing this morning. Can we hear counsel for, this, for the plaintiff? By court, the judgment of this court will be delivered tomorrow, 12th November 2024. Yeah. My Lord, I'm most, most grateful. Lord, you are grateful. Lord, why, why, I mean, <laughs> of course, being entirely the prerogative of um, the first defendant to file anything at all, with respect to I think that if the first defendant came before the court at last agenda, it presented by counsel. Council made representations before the court to file service at a certain point in time. Elects not to do so. And then, for no reason at all, elects also to appear before the court. Clearly, that is disrespect to the court. I made this observation because I'm the attorney general leader of the bar and all that. Such conduct with all respect should not be tolerated by the court. Leave it to us, Mr. Attorney right. General. Leave it to us. I, I, also... I would rather advise. Now, as a member of the bar for which you are the leader, you should reach out to him at the close of this proceedings to find out if everything is all right. My Lord, indeed, my friend, the chief said attorney, reached out to him on Friday to find out if processes are done by him. So we've done our, our, our bit. Hardly did we <laughs> expect that he would not even show case to the court by not showing up. Thank you very much. Um, um, I think at the last agenda, if my memory says me right, you also said, 
when we asked that you should file processes, he said he had instructions um, to do with the matters that he did. And then so he go for further instructions. instructions. So if he has not been employed again. No, but in my recollection is that that was before the firm agreement and then statement as to when the process should be filed by. The Supreme Court is now expected to deliver its judgment on this raging controversy. On Tuesday, 12th November 2024, the court will decide whether or not the declaration of those four seats as vacant was in consonance with the 1992 Constitution or upon a true and proper interpretation, those four MPs have truly not lost their seats. This is such a central piece in the current impasse in Parliament with all eyes now on the seven-member panel presided over by Chief Justice Gertrude Tokono. Reporting for Joy News, Kweku Asante, Supreme Court, Accra. Well, International Ratings Agency Fitch has issued new uh, alert indicating that Ghana remains in default on some of its external commercial debt pending restructuring. The report comes at a time when a top French official disclosed to Blazers for Ghana Foreign Affairs on the Joy News Channel that the French government is now, quote, cautious, unquote, in its approach to lending long-term loans to the Republic of Ghana. The European, Union, uh, the European country played a pivotal role under the Paris Club framework, which structured an external debt restructuring plan that unlocked some $3 billion bailout from the International Monetary Fund. As a result of the sovereign debt crisis, Ghana has been temporarily relieved from repaying $5.1 billion to external creditors. Speaking at the launch of the France-Ghana Economic Report for 2023-2024, Finance Minister Mohamed Amin Adam praised the intervention by the French government in assisting Ghana's uh, economic recovery to strengthen the economic partnership. President Ekofado is expected in Paris this week for bilateral engagement. There is more in the following report. The 2023-2024 France-Ghana Economic Report has revealed a sharp decline in sovereign commitments which Ghana receives from France, one of the country's official bilateral creditors. Credits which reached a record high level of 236 million euros in 2011 has now been reduced to 56 million euros, a situation the report attributes to Ghana's exclusion from sovereign loans. Ghana's Finance Minister, Mohamed Amin Adam, is hopeful that more French support will pour in for Ghana, which finds itself in an economic crisis. We got in the restructuring of our official bilateral debts with our official bilateral creditors some 5.1 billion United States dollars that we owe to you and other official bilateral creditors had to be restructured through your support, through your leadership, really uh, demonstrated to me that this relationship cannot be taken for granted. So you can help us create the jobs our people are looking for. You can help us create income that we can share as shared prosperity. In the wake of the decline in French commitments, questions are emerging over whether or not France will give more support to Ghana, which is now in dire need of liquidity support. Jean-Noël Blanc is head of the economic department at the French embassy in Ghana. But you know, currently uh, we are working with the, with the Ghanaian government on three uh, uh, sovereign, sovereign loan, you know, concessional right. loans. Nice, yeah. So in, in two areas in particular, in, in particular so healthcare and, uh, you know, uh, uh, marita maritime security. So uh, I, I would say that uh, the, sup the France support to Ghana mm -hmm. is a continuing uh, task, you know. So we didn't stop anything. Mm -hmm. So, of course, we are very cautious in the way we are, you know, lending some money to Ghana right. because of the debt. Yes. But at the end of the day, there is still three sovereign loans, you know, with the government of Ghana right. in, in the two areas I mentioned just previously. Right. So I think that after the crisis, mm -hmm. 
we are going to continue to uh, support Ghana with such loans, you know, uh, with a very, very low uh, rate uh, of interest and a maturity which is very long to support Ghana, you know, uh, in, a, in a long race of modernization. But for now? For now we have three, okay. three sovereign loans. So, uh, are you open to more? Uh, <laughs> I'm open to more, you know, right. it depends on the project. Uh -huh. Later this week, President Akufado is expected in Paris. As experts hope, this will provide an opportunity for Ghana to secure or work out another credit line. Blair Sugan's report for Joy News, Accra. Our election headquarters is brought to you by Potential uh, Real Estate, your trusted partner in real estate, Petrus or Platinum Energy, Energizing Dreams, the Chartered Institute of Management Accountant, the American Institute of Certified Public Accountant, together as the Association of International Certified Professional Accountants, also by the German Ozone Medical Center, Alternative Therapy, Dental Wellness and Beauty, Top Box Technologies, a convenient service, and Youth Bridge Foundation, bridging the gap for positive youth development. And uh, uh, let's start from the camp of uh, the NDC, uh, where the NDC presidential candidate John Mahama says the current uh, umpires over vacant parliamentary seat lacks a legal resolution and can only be addressed through political means. Speaking during a meeting with the clergy at the Great Hall of the Kwame Krum University of Science and Technology in Kumasi, he said the, that if he were president, he would bring both parliamentary sides to, uh, you know, the speaker and uh, the Council of State together to find a collaborative and amicable solution. Parliament, <laughs> Uh, Supreme Court uh, and Tim. I know some make up once I may say, Uncle me a man pinia. Majidi said, Say, Uncle May. Uncle Mamma, a friend of Marking, leader of MPP in Parliament, a co ye assembly free Supreme Court. Now, my fresh speaker, my fresh leader of NDC, leader, leadership of MPP. Now, Menya, as of opinion, be any council of states. Uh, National Peace Council. If I were the president, I would have made Afenyo Markin, the leader of the NPP, to withdraw the case from court. Then engage NDC leaders, the speaker, and bring in some respected clergy and members of the Peace Council to resolve the issue so that Parliament can function effectively again. Regarding the constitutional review that President Atamils initiated, we will continue with it. The current situation arose due to a gap in the Constitution. If it had clearly outlined a solution, this problem would not have arisen. As stated in our manifesto, we plan to hold a constitutional validation conference to address issues like this. Adi awa ye nti uni parliament view. Nti enyo me bibre wohwa a free time a yade constitutional strategy ye jumano. Yehu se emrebi entokro entokro bi ewo constitution mu. Nti ose ye swano na ye feli sa entokro ni na se ne beya emrano bi timi a ye juma amaye. Nti eno ya adi a osha ye constitution na ye se ye ba. Ye be hold the constitutional validation conference. Nti adi awa che. And to make us say, Ebi I the bar, be Bianca, a cassa, a vessel, and who he have you. And I feel be beat to set near see Supreme Court in the Parliament and term Yang Jim who am found car constitutional review no more. And to the answer near the Abeka home. And to a bear validation conference of report of constitutional review committee no. Near share near a dasu here, say, your bear amendment, and I say, Yanya amendment near Yashenia. Now, presidential candidate of the new patriotic party, Dr. Mohamedou Baumia, has accused the opposition National Democratic Congress of campaigning on propaganda in the Wasumche constituency instead of presenting what he describes as a credible alternative to the MPP's development agenda. Dr. Baumia made the accusation while addressing a rally in Wasumche constituency where he pledged to construct deplorable roads in the Ashanti region if elected president. The NPP flag bearer, who is on a tour of the Ashanti region, told uh, the crowd that the NDC is campaigning in the constituency 
is based on lies and misinformation, and that the NDC had no credible plan to develop the area. My colleague Nana Bwachi Yadom is with the Vice President and joins us live with more. Nana, so what more can you report? To continue with all developmental projects that has been started by the Akufuado administration. The Vice President has also been reiterating some of the policies that he has stated earlier, such as the credit scoring system, the Women's Trade Empowerment Fund, and his new policy for illegal mining, which is to legalize the activity by partnering the Ghana Geological Service and also his intention to make sure that activities of LGBTQ are not allowed in the country. These are some of the things that the Vice President has been talking about. Well, we remember that yesterday he said that the National Health Insurance Authority or scheme is going to absorb the cost of dialysis treatment for kidney patients. Well, it has also been part of his campaign message today. Wherever the Vice President has been, he has made mention of this new development or this new policy, which is coming off on the December, on the 1st of December. The Vice President also launched the, um, the new National Health Insurance um, Schemes Telehealth Project, which is going to also help in making sure that um, anybody who faces any illness whatsoever is able to connect to doctors and pharmacies online. These are some of the activities that the Vice President has been doing. So that's my colleague Nana Boache Yadom with the Vice President, who is the flag of the MPP in Boswamcho constituency.